what I have found is that any issue we've had with bots with consumers is because you didn't lay out the ground rules is that they saw a Facebook post that said, Hey, who loves chocolate covered strawberries? And everybody types yes or me, or they click a whatever. And then they get sent a bot and they have no clue why they're getting this message. And so I found that you've got to lay out the rules in the, in the end. It's got to be real clear and specific. Welcome to the Chatbot Podcast, the place where we talk about bots, artificial intelligence, smart automation, and messenger marketing. We value our time and enjoy when technology makes our lives easier. And now your host, Belint Pataki. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 16th episode. This time we dive into the world of restaurants and we will see some practical examples with messenger bots for higher ROIs. Today's guest is Matt Plapp with more than 18 years of experience in marketing for local small businesses. He started his marketing agency in 2007. He's the author of the restaurant marketing book, Don't 86 Your Restaurant Sales. And we are about to discuss his tips and strategies used in the industry, including making offers trackable and redeemable right inside Messenger. As always, you can find the show notes at overchatbottutorial.com forward slash podcast. Without a further ado, please welcome to the show, Matt Plapp. A big welcome to Matt uh, Plapp. Um, please introduce yourself in a few minutes uh, for the listeners who don't know you yet. A few minutes, don't give me that much, that much time. Yeah. <laughs> so my name is Matt Plapp. I am a digital marketer. You have a good story, I know. Yeah, I've had, uh, I've been in marketing since 1999. I've had my agency since, I guess, technically I started doing consulting late 07, mainly 08. And started it back then, oddly enough, on Facebook posts was, I had a lot of connections in media and I saw an opportunity that nobody was touching, which was using social media. And it was kind of funny, the com- I, re- I remember my conversations from back then, talking with 65 year old business owners about helping them with their social media. And they're like, dude, my 13 year old daughter's on Facebook. Why do I want to be on there for my business? And here we are. Now they all want to be there. Yeah. And even the technology problems we had just going live now, uh, we still push it on Facebook because everyone is on Facebook. <laughs> so actually, if you're watching this live, just uh, put into the comments, where are you from? If you have any questions that we could cover on this call, uh, that would be amazing. Uh, that's the best time to do it right now. And we'll go into that. So uh, you started early with the um, digital marketing and um, you saw the potential there. So what was the, the reason you, you established your agency? So I, I worked in radio from 1999 to 2003 <clears throat> here in the States and sold radio advertising and did well with it and really enjoyed it. In 99, at the same time I was in radio, my dad and my brother and I decided to open a boat and RV dealership. And we did it a little differently. We opened it virtually. We had a uh, online, it was called outdoorconsignments.com. We had an, a website where we sold people's campers and boats for them on consignment. And it was an idea. And I'm not a tech person. I just bought a book on how to create websites and went from there. And in 2003, the business had gotten so big that it needed me to run it versus work in radio as well. So I started running the business. And of course, it was me and my dad and brother, equal partners running it. And we grew it really quick. Well, we grew it really quick because back in around 03, 04, I accidentally discovered what is now social media, which back then was chat rooms. It was, you know, forums on bass fishing, on hunting, on camping. And I saw the power of conversation in those chat rooms that if you related to the right people and you had the right conversations, it led to our business growing. And so back in probably... 2006, 2007, I got burnt out with the boat and RV business. I was a terrible boss. Everybody we ever hired, I fired. And it got to a point where I, I had a lot of my former clients calling me from the radio days saying, hey, I see you guys are doing big things on this internet thing and Google and, the, you know, because websites back, it's hard, hard to imagine now in 2019, but back in like 2006, 2007, a lot of companies had not embraced the internet. And so a lot of them were calling me for advice. and I had always had a consultative nature in that when I sold radio, I didn't really go in and sell radio. I went in and had conversations. And if that 
company needed help, I gave them honest advice. And if that advice ended up being they needed to buy radio from me, then we talked about that. I was never a hard seller. And so I think that that, that built me up a lot of credibility with those people. So when they came back to me in like 2007, 2008, I saw the opportunity to help businesses. I'll tell you one thing that really got my attention was there was a company in particular here in Cincinnati. They still do it. They were running the same radio commercial for an entire year across two or three radio stations, the exact same terrible commercial. And it was, it had never changed. And I thought, man, who is advising them? Why is somebody not telling them, number one, they shouldn't be buying this station and this station. They should be on these two. Number two, they're paying too much because I had happened to see their rates from a friend of mine. And number three, their commercial's terrible and it hasn't changed. It needs to change frequently. And so I just got in my mind that, you know what? I know more about marketing than most of the business owners. I started to learn a lot about the internet back early on and then with Facebook and social media, MySpace. I remember those good old days. And I realized I knew a lot more than them. And so it was kind of funny how my agency got started. It was like I reached out to two friends of mine who were really good entrepreneurs. At that time, they owned three businesses. And then one other guy owned one. And I reached out and said, hey, I've got an idea. I'm getting out of the boat business. We got about eight, eight months to a year to wind it down. I'm going to go into consulting. Here's what I'm thinking. What do you think? And when I gave them my plan, they both said, hey, whenever you figure it out, we'll hire you. I'm like, well, no, no, no. You got to help me figure it out. They're like, no, you're hired when you figure it out. And so I had four clients within the first 30 days. Uh, one client was 250 a month. One was 400 a month. One was 600 a month. You know, it was all over the board. And so then I got to a point where I started realizing what I was good at. And it you know, took me till about three, about three years in. And I was like, you know what? I got to focus strictly on digital marketing. And then it took me till about 2015. And I said, I've got to focus simply on Facebook ads for restaurants. And then it led to where now we're chatbots and messenger and, you know, Facebook ads for restaurants that way. Sounds uh, very, very interesting uh, how you got there. And uh, just a quick addition on that, uh, uh, just to see the opportunity before everyone else. So that's what really what we have with uh, Messenger. So what was your first bot experience or how did you come to, to Messenger? Yeah, my, my first bot experience was frustrating uh, because it was foreign to me. And I, I'm not a programmer. I'm not a tech guy. And it's I tell people that and I've got friends of mine that have seen what I can do in Zapier and some other elements. And they say, well, you are a tech guy. And I'm like, well, I'm not. But my first experience was traffic and conversions 2017. And I was there and I want to say it was Molly Pittman and Ezra Firestone had both started talking about bots. And I saw one of Molly's sessions. I always liked her. always really enjoyed listening to her podcast. And I was kind of like the fanboy in the crowd, like, oh my God, it's Molly. And I remember listening to what she talked about and it resonated with me because I've been doing email since 1999. I always tell the story that my first ever email I did for our boat dealership back in like 99, 2000, I remember the day like it happened yesterday because I sent out like a thousand emails. We had like a thousand emails we had built up. We went to this RV show. I sent out this email and next thing I know, there's like 600 responses. And I was thinking, okay, hold on. <laughs> I've got to answer all these. And so I went through and, you know, people were asking questions. Hey, you got this camper. Hey, you got this boat. Hey, you do this. And when I heard her talking about mini chat and messenger, it took me back to 1999 because, I mean, two years ago, that same email that I'd send to a thousand people might get 15 to 20% open. It might get two or three, send you back something that's not very nice. And then a couple would opt out. And then maybe somebody had a question. So when I saw Messenger, I thought, man, this is email from the 90s when people actually were excited to hear it. I mean, I remember when, like, you know, you've got mail. You know, you're like, oh, somebody's emailing me. I was like, cool. Well, Messenger goes back to that. And then what really got me going was when I started playing with it, I was really confused. I didn't kind of, you know, know where to go things and what to do. I was fortunate that I, I got some training from a couple of different people. I reached out to three different segments of people watched what they were doing to figure out what I was missing, what I was doing wrong, what I was doing right. What really got my attention though, when I was building it was seeing that people could take different paths a lot. You know, back then we were using constant contact for a lot of our email. We don't still use it now and then drip and MailChimp and email even to that point is 
I send you something, you send me something. I send you something, you send me something. There's not a lot of, it's, it's, it's slow. And when I saw Messenger, how I could have a conversation with you, or maybe your bot in this case, and it, because you clicked this or said this, it went here. Because you had done this, it went here. I like the fact that it could be really intuitive and help us qualify conversations quicker. Yeah, it's uh, funny with the different type of messaging because uh, I had a guided conversation for like a marketing funnel and uh, it was from for Messenger. And someone said, no, that's that's not that <laughs> how messaging goes on LinkedIn. Uh, it's a little bit slower, a little bit different space. So uh, I definitely like how you pointed this out and also with the email rates and uh, Messenger. Uh, yeah, so in, in the email, it probably doesn't make sense to check the stats right after you send it out. No. Messenger is just very fulfilling. You, you, <laughs> you just say, okay, five minutes. Let's see the numbers. Let's see the messages pop in. I was, I was at a restaurant show recently, a pizza show, and I had, a, I had this board right here. I'll show you. Oh, let's see here. I had this board kind of up on a little easel and I was I, I, sitting there and I'm, the guy walks up and he's like, what do you mean 89.5% open rate? I said, well, 89.5% of the people that got the message opened it. Huh? He goes, what do you mean click through? He's like, you mean they click the link, they engaged, they commented. I'm like, yeah, in this case, they were clicking a link to go somewhere. And he said, well, wow. I said, what do you use now? He said, email. I said, and I always shoot high. I said, you're probably getting what, 20 to 25% open rates, 5 to 10% click through rates. He laughed. He goes, no, 10 to 15 open rates percent, maybe 2 to 3% click through and engagement rates. It, you know, he, and he jokingly said the same thing I always say. He's like, the only time I hear from people on email is telling me to get off my list. And that was what really caught his attention. And we had a conversation. And it was kind of wild because the rest of the weekend I was there, I talked to 50 or 60 restaurateurs. And that was the exact same comment was, wow, that's a lot more conversations. I've got a, a video that I did that I walked through a path and it's like, hey, imagine if your email, every thousand people you sent it to, 900 opened it. And of the 900 that opened it, imagine if 500 of them engaged and, oh, guess what? This is an email. This is Messenger. And it comes down to the fact that you, you can get, like on that, that broadcast there, that was... Uh, 2,100 people it was sent to on a 20% email open rate. What's that, 400 people? This one got opened by 1,800. So to be able to swing the bat 1,400 more times as a business owner is huge. I mean, that, that literally can be life-changing for a business. Yeah, definitely. I, I like how you, you come present and have this table <laughs> just in, in your uh, office. That's so cool. Um, so you were at this conference, you learned about chatbots and you're saying, okay, that's, that's going to be big. That's already uh, working well. Um, how can I implement it to the restaurants? What was your first funnel like, your first thoughts or experience? So what I saw that got my attention was that kind of where it came from. I, my, I had a restaurant program I had already built. And we were using, it started off as the old, bring this in and share your phone. It was April, 2015. And I had a client that told me something that really resonated. He said, Matt, as much as I love what you're doing social media, I can't deposit likes at the bank. Meaning I can't go to the bank and say, hey, I've got this many comments, shares, likes, put them in the bank account. He's like, when can, how can you prove that this actually is doing something? I said, well, if you give me some you give me a little rope and let me go out and, you know, don't keep me tied in here and make me do this. I can put some things out there that will get, you know, attention and get people activated. And we'll be able to say, Hey, this happened here. Well, we did the old bring this Facebook post in, show this to your server, get this, this offer for half price. And it did 18 grand in sales. And to put that in perspective, the item's price was, was uh, four ninety nine, So a five bucks, you know, divided by five bucks, that's 3,600 people across three locations that redeemed it in one day. So a lot of people, it drove a lot of incremental sales. And 
when they happened, he was like, holy crap, this is great. Well, then it became, okay, how do we do this more often? And we turned to email. And so we would send out an email and it was, hey, this email is good for seven days, bring this in. And then it kind of kept evolving to where by the time I found Messenger, we were using texting because my biggest problem I had was I wanted to be able to attribute the ad over here, got me Matt Platt, Matt Platt came in and spent $30. I wanted to be able to attribute it across the line because I knew if I had that data, it would allow me to get people to, you know, to judge whether our, our marketing worked. And so my first bots were literally trying to mimic my email was, Hey, what's your, you know, I think I might even ask what's your name back early on. I think honestly, but you know, trying to find out their information so that I could deliver a graphic to them. This is before I kind of understood how to redeem uh, early on. I think we sent the first ones. I want to say we sent them to a, ta- a landing page that when people opted in, they got sent to a landing page where they had to opt in again and it just was trial and error trying to figure out what the best route was. We, we've experimented with texting, with mobile wallet, with uh, mini chat. I mean, we, then we found like what we're using now is the best combination of just keeping the conversation inside of Messenger. Yeah, definitely. Uh, every time you jump off from a platform and use a different one, uh, people would just jump off instantly like... Uh, it's 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 very uh, powerful if you can keep everything inside and still build your database, bring in different uh, automations and technology, and that's uh, what what excites me about Messenger that much. Um, so you have uh, three stages. I, I saw it. Uh, I don't know in, if it was your your page or or your book, but you have to get awareness, build database, and drive sales. Uh, could you expand a little bit on, on these three principles? Sorry about that. I forgot there was a guy coming to do something at the house and our dog started freaking out. The, uh, yeah, no worries. So your question, we talked, we were talking about the, within the bot and keeping them there because the more, the more places you give them to go, the more breakage you have. And, and that's what I found. And that's one of the things, one of the reasons we went away from, we were using, uh, mobile wallet, we found out the same thing that great product. You know, our landing pages worked great. Our texting program worked great. Mobile wallet had a lot of opportunity, but every time I sent them somewhere else or gave them an extra step, it didn't work as well. Like now it's literally, you know, 100%, you know, within messenger that, you know, here's a person that opted in looks like you know, 317. So an hour and 12 minutes ago. And I mean, it's right in there, their information, the promotion they get, They'll redeem in Messenger. It'll go from Messenger to Zapier to Google Sheets. We have a 22 tab dashboard. And we can, I can show my clients like, hey, we spent money to get this, to get this ad exposure. And that ad exposure drove this database. And that database drove these sales. I think that was the three boxes you were talking about, correct? Yep. Yeah. So it's this right here. So what what I found with marketing, and this kind of it cracks me up because our competition as digital marketers is traditional media. It's what businesses are more comfortable buying. In the states here, it's radio, TV, billboards, and then sports marketing, and then digital media comes along. And what cracks me up is that all marketing gets attention. It grows attention. Now, with mass media, you have no clue how much because in radio, for example, in Cincinnati, they say a million people listen to the radio. Well, that million person number is based on a thousand surveys that were sent out. So there are a lot of guesstimations there. Whereas in this case, I know from Facebook and Instagram that we reached 110,000 people and 6,874 engaged in the ad. And so that's where most marketing stops is that you spend money, you get exposure. Now, I'm a huge proponent of growing the database that every dollar you spend on marketing should help you do one thing, grow a database, not sell. Because a lot of businesses try and get awareness to sell. And I look at that as really short-sighted because one, you're not, if you're, if I get awareness here and sell to this person, but I don't know who the hell they are, what does that do me good next month or two months or three months? Because now I got to go find them again. And as you know, it marketing's hard to find people over and over the old hope and pray. So that's why I have it in order that the second part, the goal is to grow a database is 
how do I use my attention getting marketing to grow a database? And now once I grow that database, I have to prove that it's worth it and drive sales. And so that's what I love about Messenger. Like all of our programs that we use at our restaurants are redeemed in Messenger for one really big reason, validation. Now, like in this case, this case study, 34.31% of the 4,681 people redeemed their offer. So that tells me that you know, a third of the audience, I'm getting the correct people. And so now it's okay. Typically, people focus on driving sales or, or, or buying advertising. I put it all together because you've got to, awareness is nothing without a database. Sales is nothing without a database. Database is nothing without proving it can sell. So you got to have all three components. Yeah, I love it. And it can especially work well in, uh, in, in sales. And uh, when you are about to sell new chatbots or your solutions, uh, you can just show, okay, this is what I have for you. And uh, this is what we will see. And we can see how it works. And there's no guessing. There's no... Like, yeah, I guess people are aware of my presence. There's no, there's like hardcore data behind it. I had this conversation with somebody the other day. I went in, I sat down and the, the guy that we're working with has a few restaurants, has, uh, I guess, 11 now, two of which are in our program and a third's coming on board and a fourth and fifth in the near future. And I said, you know, what's so cool about this is the fact that I can tell you what's happened. You know, I could tell him in his case, I had his dashboard open and I could say, look, we, we had this many impressions, which is great. I'll go have that. Of those impressions, this many people engaged. Of those engagements, this many people gave us their information. And of this, many people gave us their information. They, they spent this much money. So you're able to say, hey, is this working or not? I had a client uh, March of 2018 that we had been running our program for like 45 days with. And... We got to about day 9, 45, I guess, 60, about two months in, and the dogs are barking. Can you hear the dogs there barking in the background? Yeah. <laughs> and I told him, uh, I looked at it, I said, Jim, we're only getting 2% redemption rate. And he all dog. I said, we're only getting 2% redemption rate, which is terrible. Yes, we're getting attention, we're growing a database, but I cannot get these people that are opting in to walk into the restaurant. So it's no good to spend money to get a database that doesn't do business with you. And so it was actually kind of fulfilling for me as a marketer that I could give a customer a reason not to do business with me versus being like, oh, maybe, maybe not. And my background selling radio advertising back in late, late 90s, early 2000s, that was the hardest part of the job. It was the fact that you had to go to a business and there was all guessing. Did something work? Did something not work? Nobody knew. And that was the worst conversation was to be able to have and say, hey, uh, how's your radio ads going? Because they didn't know. I sure as hell didn't want to know if they knew that it wasn't because then they were canceling. So it was a really, uh, it was the word I'm looking for, acrimonious, I think, relationship with regards to that. I love the fact that I can go into a business now and say, hey, we did this to get attention. This attention grew a database. And this database either did or didn't do business with you, let's do business together, let's not do business together. Yep, love it. And also Ryan said in the comments that uh, it's key to have these trackable real ROI stats. So could you give us a little bit of a rundown, like how it goes, like what is like a typical client of you and what, what does it look like in a funnel? Let's see, I'm, I'm new in a city. Uh, and you find me on, on Facebook with some offers uh, for a restaurant. Yeah, so are you saying like the relationship from a, my bot to a consumer? Exactly, like uh, I'm, I'm a consumer, I'm a potential restaurant guest, and I'm not aware of your restaurant yet. And uh, let's say I'm new in the system for whatever reason you find me as a potential new client. And um, what... What experiences do I have? What exposure from you? Um, what marketing? Keep you all the dogs. This guy's walking right in front of my house. So the, uh, you know, what we look for with restaurants. So number one, the consumer experience. Hold on, this guy needs me. Give me one second. I'm sorry. I didn't know he was coming at this time. Give me one second. Okay, no sure. okay I'm back. My bad. 
So the, the conversation goes from a consumer standpoint, what I'm trying to do on Facebook is get these consumers to engage in a meaningful conversation because, hold on a sec. Because what I found is one of the reasons I love Messenger is that we can take, I can see who I'm talking to. You know, on a landing page, for example, I was at a restaurant the other day that had a really cool program on, I think I'm going to go get a bot and give away a dog on, on a bot. So what I found is that in the past we were using landing pages. And what sucks is that you drive somebody from message from a Facebook ad to a landing page or from email to a landing page, texting to a landing page, something like that. You don't know who goes there. So what I love about messenger is I can see that Matt Platt came in. Matt Platt saw my Facebook post. He clicked the link or he commented. I'm a big fan of the comment growth tool. If you get the correct engagement and he comes into messenger at that point, my number one task is to get them to acknowledge why they are in messenger. So what I have found is that any issue we've had with bots, with consumers is because you didn't lay out the ground rules is that they saw a Facebook post that said, Hey, who loves chocolate covered strawberries? And everybody types yes or me, or they click a whatever. And then they get sent a bot and they have no clue why they're getting this message. And so I found that you've got to lay out the rules in the, in the end. It's got to be real clear and specific what we're doing, why we're doing it and how we're going to conversate with you in messenger. Cause consumers are not used to messenger yet. As much as we all know it, I've got friends of mine that are really techie that when I show them what we do in messenger, they're blown away. They're like, how'd you do that? How did you, how did you get in there? And, you know, they don't get the connection. And so I find with our consumers, with our bots, and if I'm on the right track, let me know if that's what you're looking for. If not, is that you've got to spell it out date right at the beginning, what your ad, your text, everything has to say, here's why we're talking to you. Here's what we're talking to you about. And here's what we're going to do once you interact with this ad. And then once they get in the messenger, you've got to live up to that experience. You can't say this and give something else. And you've got to have clear explanations. I'll give you an example of something we've changed recently in our bots is I saw this at the mini chat conference. I can't think of her name that said it on stage, but we've added mascots in our bots now. So we're naming all of our bots, like our pepperoni, our restaurant we have, it has a bunch of pizza chains. Their bot is called Peppy. And it's a little pepperoni with sunglasses and, you know, thumbs up. And so we found that trying to make it a little humor, not make it robotic. Uh, but then once they're in messenger, you know, engaging with them and number one, getting them to subscribe, which is easy, but number two, delivering what the ad said we we're going to deliver. So if it's a free pizza in the ad, it's a free pizza in the bot. And then at that point, based on how they use the bot is how we communicate next. If they don't use it, you know, we'll ask engaging conversations down the road to try and get them back in. We'll try and find out, are they married? Are they single? Uh, do they have kids? What is like in right now in the States coming up here in the next month is March Madness, big basketball. So we try and find out there what's their favorite basketball team. Like I've got a client down the street here, like where I live in Cincinnati, we have UK, Louisville, Xavier, UC, Ohio State, Indiana, and Notre Dame basketball, eight teams that are popular in this region. Well, somebody that's in a bot with this restaurant doesn't want to get notified if UK is playing when they're a Louisville fan. So what we've started to do is we've got contests in place right now that we're finding out, hey, March Madness is around the corner. Who's your favorite team? Choose below. And they'll choose their team so that when March Madness comes around in three or four weeks, we're not sending people that are fans of this team a message about this team. I think that's key in the experience with a consumer because the minute you start giving them other crap, now you're just the same as email. Yeah, I love it. I love the little segmentation and going the extra mile and being able to personalize the conversations even more. That's what's Messenger about. Yeah. So what would be a typical offer from Facebook? What would you say? You you have to manage the expectations. So, okay, I, I see a Facebook ad. What is this about? Is it always like some sort of coupons or you have these little quizzes inside the Messenger? What, what's What's a typical example? Yeah, so we'll use, we'll use three things uh, for this. Now, keep in mind, the vast majority of my clients, we're looking to grow a database, but we're looking to grow the correct database. So that comes in with targeting, 
That's also why I love redemption and messenger, because when you redeem an offer in messenger, the way we have our automation set up is that it builds a custom audience through Zapier to Drip to Facebook uh, custom audience. Now there's some of abilities to do that in Messenger now, but we haven't switched ours yet because we have a pretty specific system. But the fact that I now can prove that the people I'm getting are spending money allows me to advertise smarter with regards to custom audience and lookalikes. But when we're in Messenger, or at least trying to get conversations in Messenger started, we have three, three or four things, mainly three. The number one is the easiest is a free food item. You know, I tell my clients, you're a restaurant, you sell pizza, you sell it for 10 or 12 bucks. Your cost is actually about two bucks. We want to grow a database. We want to find people who enjoy your pizza so that we can get them back five to 10 to 15 times more this year. And what we do with that is that ad, the main goal of that ad is, hey, you want a free pizza. If you do, click this button and we're going to send you the messenger and we're going to give you a free pizza you can bring into the restaurant in messenger. Other times we'll ask, what's your favorite pizza topping? What's your favorite dessert pizza? What's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite appetizer? So we'll, we'll do things of that nature if it's comic growth tool or if it's just flat out, hey, you want to click the button below, that works as well. The other thing we do is contesting is the Super Bowl just happened, you know, two weeks ago. So it was like, hey, the big game is coming up. Who, who do you have to win? And sometimes you don't even have to give them anything. It's all about show getting involved in the conversation you know they're going to like. Hey, who's going to win this weekend? New England or uh, St. Louis? Who was it? New England and Los Angeles. New England or Los Angeles? One, stay away from the trademark names, Patriots and the Rams, because you get in trouble there. Stay away from the Super Bowl. But we'll have conversations saying, hey, who's going to win this weekend? And the minute they comment, it goes to Messenger. And of course, we'll lay out what the conversation is going to be. And then the third one is typically some type of very targeted message with regards to uh, kids or marriage or uh, birthdays coming up, some type of event that we can tie to them and get them into a gauge around that event. A birthday is a great one. Yeah, actually, I had a, a client call today and they were like, that was their first time they had a birthday. So uh, how does that look like in practice just quickly? So uh, birthday ad? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, we it's pretty straightforward. I mean, Facebook's got two options. You can target people uh, the month of their birthday or seven days before their birthday. And so we'll have an ad running that says, hey, your big day is coming up. We want to celebrate with you. Uh, Click below to find out an exclusive offer just for you and your friends on your birthday. Great. And do you also save that information in uh, in the Messenger bot and use it in the years coming? Yeah, so we always are uh, saving custom fields, uh, always looking for data. Because what I love about Messenger, and I'll, I'll go to, here's a good example of why I like it more than I like, you know, email. We had a client, this has been probably, let's see, it's 2019, six, seven years ago. We had a client that we took on in Cincinnati, Ohio, that had five locations. It was a music store. And they sold band instruments to high school kids. They sold to parents uh, of the high school kids. They sold to guys that played on bands on the weekend. They sold the full-time musicians. They sold the hobbyists. So they had this email list of like 18 to 20,000 people that they would send all of them the same email. And my comment was, guys, uh, this is a 14-year-old who rented a tuba. This is a guy who thinks he's Van Halen. You know, you can't have the same conversation. That's what kills open rates. That's what kills engagement rates. And when you constantly do that, your open rates go down and down because there's not a trust level that you're sending me something valid. So what we strive to do in our messenger bots is how can we get more information about the customer so that it comes to a point where I know in five months, for example, that Matt Plapp is married with kids and eats dinner more often in our restaurant than he does lunch. I'm not going to send Matt a college night promotion. I'm not going to send him, uh, you know, a lunch promotion. Like I've got a client of mine I met with the other day where his business is located. People either work there or they live there. They don't do both. It's just the way this is. Like if you live in that community, you drive 30 minutes to your job. If you work in that community, you typically live over here. It's just for whatever reason, that's how it is. 
And so we do a good job in his messenger bot of finding out do you where do you where do you work or live? So that if a person works in this area, it's called Eastgate, I'm not going to send them a dinner offer, like a, you know, a, a late night offer. I might send them, hey, on your, are you on your way home? On your way home from work today, make sure you stop by and get this item or for lunch next week, come in. So understanding that type of information, if I go back to the band example, if they're in a messenger bot and I can find out, why are you a customer of ours? Does your kid play the drums? Is he in the band? Does he play the tuba, the saxophone, the flute? So that when something comes out, some reads that they might want to sell, they're not going to broadcast to the, hey, everybody, we got this new read sale that would only go for a flute to people that play the drum. So I think that's one of the biggest elements, but it's also the fine line us as marketers have to walk to make sure that we do it correctly because we could, you and I, I'm not going to blame you. I'm responsible for email not being that good right now. I've done my fair share of crappy emails. It's my job as a marketer to try and figure, okay, how can I not ruin Messenger like we all ruined email? And I think that's one of the good things about it. I know obviously there's some negative with, it's a Facebook's platform, whereas email is everybody. Facebook owns Messenger and they're controlling some of your things you can do. But I hope that they've got the rules in place that keep us in check and don't allow us to do what we've done to email. Yeah, that's a good point. And marketers come in and destroy the platforms and try to get the attention. And then there's a new platform coming in, in many of the cases. Uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying the fact that Facebook uh, has these rules and people complaining about them all the time, but it basically just makes us uh, uh, work with a platform that is there for long term. And, and supports us to, to be there and not ruin it, uh, as, you, as you mentioned, with email. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask uh, about some of the advanced technology integrations that you have. So um, let's uh, talk a little bit about the redeemable part of your or marketing. Yeah. So we, I, I don't think we have as much advanced as some other people. Uh, we're using pretty basic technology within ManyChat, but I've got a Google Sheet that we've created. I, actually, I guess we started creating it almost two and a half years ago, and it went from one tab to two tabs to three tabs. So I think now it's 22, I want to say, is the count. And our technology, like somebody asked me the other day, they said, hey, Matt, you know, they, they were buying into our program and said, hey, what, what am I buying? Am I buying your software? I'm like, dude, I don't have a software. I'm I've found a way to connect a couple of things and, 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 but at the same time, that wasn't even the smart part. It was the part of understanding the, the flow. So when you look at our technology, we're doing is we've got people redeeming on their phone in messenger. So they're in messenger, they come in the restaurant, they had their scan a scan code and that brings up the redeem option or they just ask the server, Hey, I've got my free appetizer. Great. Do me a favor. Click this button. Okay. Now enter this. Here's the dollar amount of your check. Click submit. What happens after that is where the technology comes into place because what we do is we use Zapier to send that to a couple places. Number one, a Google Sheet that goes into a Google Sheet. It's not just your normal one. It's one that can attribute if Matt Platt comes in 20 times this year, it knows Matt Platt comes in 20 times. It knows what offers I redeemed, how much I redeemed them for, how many days between opting in to redemption, between first offer to second offer. It's, it's smart. And it's because of a guy named Peter in the Philippines who's worked with me. Uh, this started off as something I did on my own a long time ago. Then I hired a guy uh, that helped me out of New Zealand create a lot of cool stuff. And then it's kind of from there taken about, you know, I think probably about the 20th version of this. And Peter now is who's on my team that was a, a marketing agency in the Philippines that works as one of his clients. And he helps me constantly evolve this thing. What happens after the Google Sheet is it then goes from the Google Sheet through Zapier again, and we, we add them to Drip. We use Drip for email, because we still do email, and we actually get on our, our campaigns when people opt in, we get 60% open rates. And it makes sense, because they just opted in to get something. And all the offer is doing is driving them back to Messenger. And so we'll use Drip email to send out a reminder that we don't send in Messenger, because we don't want to violate the rules of the 24 plus one. And so we use email for that. But more importantly, we use Messenger and Drip through Zapier 
to update the custom audiences in Facebook. Because what I like about Facebook from a standpoint of you run an ad. So you got almost like the funnel. You got top of the funnel. I pick an audience. This right here looks like the people I should be targeting with Facebook ads. And then you get the next level is, okay, this is the people that engage with my ad. Now, if you stop, that's what Facebook is going to use to judge your campaign. They're going to say, hey, we targeted 10,000 people. These 1,000 people engaged. We're going to keep finding people that look like these 1,000 to optimize the ad campaign. But we go a couple steps further. Number, number, the third one is we get people that opted in. So from, this isn't even complicated. As a market, you could go in Facebook and choose the objection of creating a custom audiences of people that message your page. And so now we can tell Facebook in this ad that, hey, not only that these people like and comment and engage in it, they also opted in. Well, then what we use Drip for is two problems. Number one, to identify people that redeem. So now we can go back to the Drip to the custom audience and our Facebook ad is constantly being optimized for two things. Number one, it's excluding people who have already opted in. Number two, it's updating a custom audience, a lookalike based off of people that redeemed. And the third thing you can do if you want to, if you have a if you have a lot of low redemption rates, like for example, let's say you have 100 redemptions come in and the client's average check should be 40 bucks and you've got 40 people that spent 10 bucks, you can go in there and set a filter up and say, hey, only add people to this custom audience that spent above $25. So now you're getting rid of the cheapos and you're only creating a custom audience, a lookalike audience based off of people that redeem. So from a techie point, I think that's probably the coolest part because it's allowing me to constantly refresh my ad, my targeting with lookalikes of people that redeemed a certain dollar amount. Exactly. You can really double down on the ideal clients and see, okay, these are my people who spend the most money, uh, bring in friends, organized whatever like birthdays um so why not just double on these and let facebook use all its data to find similar runs yep i mean i i heard an analogy it was actually on uh perpetual uh traffic molly Pittman's Pittman's po podcast and the guy was talking about facebook ads i can't think who it was but he equated it to a golf club you golf by any chance no, I don't. So in the golf world, guys like me will go out and buy a $300 driver and we'll get up on the tee. And instead of just swinging nice and smooth and letting the club do its work, we think that because we swing harder, it's going to go farther. Well, in reality, the harder you swing, the room for error is minimalized because now you got this thing that you're trying to hit a ball with this club face. You're like this. Well, now all of a sudden, the harder you swing, it's a moving target. Well, Facebook ads, what he, it was a great uh, analogy he, he made was he said, Facebook ads are like a golf club that let Facebook, let Facebook give it the right data and let it do its job because it'll figure out the sweet spot. Whereas a lot of us, like I, I know a couple guys that will constantly, they'll get in their ad. Hey, I've been running an ad for 30 minutes and it's not working. Like, geez, dude, let it, let it do its job. You know, let, let the golf club swing. Don't worry about over swinging. Yeah, I, I love when people like do the minimum, like not even the minimum, like, hey, it's not working or what's happening. Like, yeah, <laughs> need to give it a little bit of time. Um, you mentioned messenger codes. Um, how much education do the average um, customer needs about this? Uh, were you, uh, did you have any issues in, in the past, like explaining it or were there like issues with that? Because I know it, it can be complex for many. And I heard like many people in the groups and everywhere just coming like, oh, people don't know how to use it. So what, what is the secret of making this work? I, w I wish I had the secret. Well, the secret is the ability for somebody at the business to have a conversation about what it is. When we've had people at restaurants say, you know, I got an example behind me here. You know, when you're at a restaurant and that cashier's got this on and it says, get a free burrito, ask me how. Well, how do I do it? Oh, you have a message on your phone? Yeah, cool. Do me a favor. Take it out. Hold the camera down. Scan this. Sweet. Now you're in. When they don't have, when that conversation is absent, consumers don't know what this is. Uh, I actually, at the mini chat conference, had somebody that's pretty well known there 
that walked up and I had a name badge on this. And he was like, hey, what's that? And I'm looking at my badge thinking there's food on it, right? And I'm like, what? That? What? That code thing? I'm like, it's the messenger code. Oh, that's pretty cool. Where'd you get that? I'm like, at mini chat, the conference you're at. And it just isn't widely known. And what's ironic is I, I think the, 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 the messenger code is what the QR code was five years ago. Because I remember when the QR code came out. And about five to six years ago, I had a lot of clients with campaigns with QR codes on table toppers, check presenters, receipts. And consumers were like, what is that thing? That's a weird looking barcode. How do I scan a barcode? And then it was like, oh, you got to download an app. I'm not downloading an app. And so the QR code went away. Well, then all of a sudden, this past six to 12 months, the QR code like on an iPhone in the States, it's in there. That if I take my phone and show my camera, it pulls it up and will go to that URL. So now the QR code is pretty widely accepted. And we've got some of our clients that we're experimenting with the QR code versus the messenger code to see that if they walk in the restaurant and there's a sign here that has the get your free burrito, scan this, and with a couple instructions, or the QR code one with no instructions, want a free burrito, scan me, uh, trying to see where it's at. I'm pretty confident the QR code is going to win just because the, the messenger code is so new. One of the other thing that's really hurts the messenger code is Facebook's uh, changing of how to use it. Because, you know, at one point there was a button on the bottom that said scan. You click that, you scan. Then it went to the people. Then it went here. And so I actually have had my phone before in three days period change three times to where it was. And so that also hurts a little bit. If, if, if your business has the ability to have a conversation, it's a gold mine. Like I, I wear this at trade shows. I'll wear this at uh, Funnel Hacking Live this week. I'll wear it next week at Traffic and Conversions. Week after that at a pizza expo, week after that at the Wisconsin Restaurant Association show. And every person I'll have it on, they'll all be like, oh man, what is, what do you got going there? I'm like, you know about Facebook Messenger? Like, no, let me show you. And what's great about it from a, from a B2B standpoint, guys like us that are at trade shows, if I ask you for your business card, I'm, I'm working the booth, you walk by, hey, have a card. Let me have one of your business cards. Majority of them, oh, I don't have any on me. Or, I, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I don't want to get contacted. The minute I say, You've never used automation for messenger for your business? Well, no. How do I do it? Take your messenger out. I mean, it's, it's the easiest way to get, to get a lead at a trade show because they want to see the technology. And if you're like me, you've got a, a page set up that's your business. So you can literally have the code scan this. Boom. Is this you, Mike? Yeah, cool. Go ahead now and click this button. Boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, you have a conversation with somebody. They see the technology. Like I use the technology. Like everything that I do at shows, at events, like this thing here, you'll see, there's a scan code on it. You know, people were scanning that all the time uh, with instructions. So when you use the technology, you get more comfortable with it. But long answer to your question, it's where the QR code was five or six years ago. Yep. I love it. Uh, great uh, tips inside. And also with the QR code one, because uh, you can add a link to it and that could be a uh, ref link. So you can utilize uh, it that way as well and probably needs less explanation. And from the comments uh, below, uh, also uh, Ryan just uh, said uh, they have 30% of their uh, opt-ins uh, coming from uh, the messenger code. And yeah, I love the, the live examples, what you just said. And we have this opportunity as, as messenger marketers to have extra like showcase our portfolio, right? When we, we just want to stay in contact or even like have an appoint, appointment uh, flow when uh, people can book a time slot or uh, something else. Um, I want to take a, take a look at the comments. Maybe there are some questions about yeah, it. Um, sure. So they, um, they redeem the quotes inside the messenger. Um, can they also pay with it? Or do the orders via messenger? Or that's uh, not uh, really something you do or there's a big need for it? Uh, not in our program, no. I mean, I'm sure the technology is there. I've seen people that are doing ordering in messenger. Uh, there's actually a company in the United States right now. Uh, they're one of the biggest clearing houses for coupons. And they are testing technology with a uh, Home Depot. And I think it's called Scott's Turf Builder where people get a coupon in messenger 
And they actually, when they purchase it, they scan their receipt at the store and it pops up and says, Hey, you spent, you, you're due a $2 rebate. Click here to get it in messenger or in Facebook or PayPal. And so there's a lot of technology there. I'm probably the wrong guy for that. You know, I stay in my lane with regards to, we run the ROI engine, which is my programs called. We run it specifically how it's built. I don't do ordering in messenger. I don't do payment messenger for food. Now we are running some tests where people are buying offers in messenger, where we've got a couple of clients that instead of having a higher retainer with us, they have a lower retainer and we're selling an offer that they can only get in messages like they redeem at the store but they're buying it in Messenger for 5 or $10, and that's offsetting the retainer and the ad spend. Oh, that's an interesting solution. Yeah. Um, so you basically upsell within uh, Messenger in that way for the client? Yeah, yeah so like one of them I've got, to build, I've got to finish building this week with my team and get to a client that we're going to put into place with two of his restaurants is when they come into the bot, they get a free sandwich. And then what we're going to say is after they redeem their free sandwich, because this is, you go to the people that were the iron, the, the iron is hot, you know, strike where the iron's hot. So when they redeem their sandwich, their cop, their message are going to get, Hey, we appreciate your business. Everybody at the team here, love, you know, appreciate you coming in and, and having dinner with us. Would you like this offer again? Or would you like another exclusive offer? Yes, I would. Great. How about for, this $15 item for five bucks for, you know, whatever, two weeks or a month. We're kind of playing with the verbiage concept being that they, they see it. They just redeemed a, a meal at your place and they see a $15 offer for five bucks. All this client's trying to do is recoup some of his ad spend. And so now all of a sudden we get 300 redemptions in a month and 300 get asked that question and a hundred go, heck yeah, I'll, I'll pay five bucks for that. Well, there's 500 bucks. His ad spend's about 500. Well, of that 500, about 70%, it's like Groupon, about 60 to 70% are actually going to be redeemed. And then they're probably going to bring somebody with them. So you get a customer walking through the door, which is powerful for a restaurant. They bring somebody with them. And then you've got some of your money back on the front end to you know, recoup your ad spend. Exactly. Uh, actually, we have a case study on uh, episode 14 uh, about a festival and okay. they had a big part on this invitation because no one goes alone to the festival and it's very similar to the restaurants like most people go with friends or with someone else. So, uh, yeah, you can just uh, easily uh, go a little bit harder on, on what you offer for one person and trust in that uh, they will bring other people inside as well. Yeah. Yeah, sounds great. Um, is there a good amount of messages that you can send? Uh, so there is some limitation, like you, you get this information and try to personalize, but is there a time where they like just fed up with the messages? Do you, do you have like a weekly um, or, or more often or, or less uh, messaging frequency? What's your best practices in terms of that? My goal is to talk to customers at least every 14 days. And if we look at it, about a third of our database are redeeming offers. So they're talking to us. So that's easy. That's an easy one. So then I look at my middle third, which are like every other month they're redeeming with us. So now I got to figure out what's a conversation starter there. And we typically use promotions and contests. So contesting like who's going to win this, the big game this week who's your team for march madness what's the best father's day gift you ever got you know what's the ask questions to try and one get more data but two get them involved and then honestly the third part we try and do is we try and get people off the list that aren't active you know hey we sent you this offer you didn't redeem it you haven't you haven't interacted with us please click here to unsubscribe or if you want this again, let us know. Like, it's funny how many people, like when they go to, oh, no, 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 I don't want, don't take it away. Uh, so you've got to be careful. You know, I see pretty frequently people overusing bots or you know, I, I saw a guy the other day in one of the groups who had said, man, uh, I'm getting all this negative feedback on the, you go in the back of Facebook, you can see your negative feedback. He was up really high. And he's like, I don't understand why we only send one message a day. I'm like, <laughs> Dude, my wife doesn't message me every day. <laughs> I don't want you messaging me every day. 
And so you've got to understand there's got to be rules of engagement from a standpoint that when somebody opts into our program with restaurants, we let them know that we have promotions that come out every month and we'll be contacting them for different reasons. And that's where you got to stay within the lines of Facebook and get in and get engagement. You know, somebody said, well, how, how do you, how do you get engagement? Well, if you don't have their birthday, ask them, Hey, we're curious. When's your birth? What month is your birthday? You know, they're going to know why you're asking. You're a restaurant. You want to give them a re- an offer. So they're going to give you their damn birthday. You know, and there, there's a million ways to have a conversation. You just have to look at who you're talking to and figure out what's important to them and figure out a way to get them to conversate with you. But yeah. If you talk to somebody, Every day, like this guy was, of course, they're opting out. If you talk to them, you know, one, once or twice a week, that's borderline. Every two weeks, you find a val of I call it VBR, a valid business reason to have a conversation. Nobody's be mad about that. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> I love your uh, analogy between the the like wife so like very intimate and um tight connection and, and the random business around and um they're like just once a day um yeah that's uh funny um i think uh we have a question about the future how you you see what's the next uh thing coming up and there is uh an a uh, r a r uh, mentioned sorry for the <laughs> pronunciation uh, issue so ryan said uh what do you see uh this coming uh in messenger or is is this uh something for the rest of the industry at all uh so what's coming in the future i i honestly think what i've seen and i was telling a, a colleague this yesterday uh we're so far ahead of the average marketer It's not even funny. Now we all, you know, like I've got in my one pro, in my program, I've got about 200 agencies I deal with, and we're talking about restaurant marketing. I had a restaurant marketing conference in Cincinnati back in uh, January. There's this perception because we all see each other that we're everywhere. Like the country is set, the world is saturated with Facebook Messenger marketing experts for restaurants. And I'm like, guys, we are such the minority. It's not funny. And when I look at it, I have, I have the opportunity. I have the pretty, it's pretty cool. because I still have clients that we do other marketing for. And so I get presentations from right today. I had two from two direct mail companies and one from a radio station. They are no lie selling what Matt Platt sold in 2008. Exactly. They, they have not figured out social media yet. Like they don't even know what a bot is. I had a client of mine that we signed on who went back, uh, was showing it to the radio company that they deal with. They're like, what do you mean bot? Like a robot? Like they didn't understand it. So keep in mind, if you're watching this video and you're a, a person that's building chat bots and you're building automation, number one, we're probably a year or two away from business owners comprehending and talking to us. Like they're still understanding boosting a Facebook post. Now we're talking about doing advanced Facebook posts tied to a bot, tied to automation, boom, 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 boom. They're just mind blown. But when you can show them, hey, would you like 2,500 more a month in sales? Well, yeah. Okay, well, this messenger campaign did that. If we find a way to strategically build this for you, and we can add 2,500 bucks in sales a month, would you be cool with that? Well, yeah, great. So make sure you keep it simple because we're way ahead of the game. We're probably at least a year to two years of where people are understanding what we're talking about now. Along with that, I think we're way ahead of the curve also when it comes to automation. Too many marketing tactics fail at my clients' businesses because they involve my client. Like I've got a company right now that I got hired to speak at an event in St. Louis in about, I guess, five weeks. And part of it was that I, I had the idea. I say, I'm, sp- I'm speaking to your conference attendees. Can you get me one attendee? Because this isn't my normal vertical. Similar. Can you get me one attendee that I can hop on a call with that will agree to do whatever the hell I tell him to do so that in five weeks when I'm up on stage, I can point to him and say, look what we did. Here was the goal. Here's what's happened. And here's where we are now. And here's how to go forward. I said, yeah. So I had a conversation with a guy. We traded emails this weekend. He's supposed to have me every day by Thursday. There's a pretty good chance I won't get that Thursday. You know why? It's in his hands. He's got to shoot a video. He's got to do this. The minute you put stuff in business owners' hands, it falls apart. 
And I know why, because I'm a, I'm a business owner. When I had our boat RV dealership that we owned for 10 years, there wasn't a day that went by that I walked in with a to-do, a to-do list that 10 things didn't get put on there. That an employee didn't drive a camper through our front window that was 30 feet tall. It actually happened a couple of times. That an employee didn't drop a four-wheeler off a trailer driving down the road to deliver it and it ran into a gas station. You know, that stuff happens to business owners. And what happens when that happens is their day gets screwed up. They don't do it. What I love about automation is that we have the ability to take it out of the hand. You know, I've got a program that we run with another business I own that is somebody else's program. This person built it. It's gold. It's like a map flap in that industry. And it's pretty cool because what it does for that business is it automates everything. The upfront, the follow-up, the nurture. My partner at this business doesn't have to do anything with regards to it. When he did a year and a half ago, it didn't happen because he's busy. So I think automation is the, is the future from what we're doing. If we can figure out a way to automate marketing, it'll work great. That's why my restaurant program works so well. The server has to click a button. If they had to do 20 other things, you know, it wouldn't happen. Yep. I love it. And, um, if you set up it correctly, it just does the job. And I actually had another post on my Facebook uh, the other day. I, I, I missed an order and uh, it would have nev- never happened if I do it live. But um, the automation just executed whatever I I, 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 I I told it to execute on. And if you set it up correctly, never misses a deadline, never will forget about asking about updates and uh, upgrades and and... Uh, it just does its job. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, you have a book about uh, restaurant marketing. Uh, just say a couple of words about that, and I think we'll wrap this up. Yeah, so I, I wrote this book. Uh, it's actually, from what I understand, it's the first ever book with Minichat and on messenger marketing. It's called Don't 86 Your Restaurant Sales. And I'm working on my second book now. I wrote this book because I had actually... I almost finished a book this time last year called Create Your Own Radio Station. My concept was I was writing a book to teach small business owners how to create a radio station, which in my world is a database. How you as a small business owner have the ability to change your business by having a your own radio station, messenger, email, text, mailing, retargeting, video, all the stuff. Well, I got to a point where I couldn't get it across the finish line because I didn't know why. And I went to traffic and conversions, oddly enough, where I'm going next week. I sat in on a session and the stuff the guy mentioned just kind of hit me. And I'm like, you know what? I, I'm writing a book on my restaurant program. So I call it Don't 86 Your Restaurant Sales. I don't know if you can see that, the lights on it. The term 86 in the, in the States means something is out. So if a restaurant runs out of bacon, they say, hey, 86 bacon. It means bacon's out. They can't sell anymore. So the 86 Your Restaurant Sales is like, you know, don't stop your restaurant sales. Don't kill your restaurant sales. And what it is, is it's literally a tutorial. It's not a step-by-step build, but it's a tutorial on why, I'm, why I believe in having a database, how to grow a database, how to use offers through Facebook ads to grow a database, how to put them in the messenger, how to communicate with them, and how to track it. And I did it as a lead gen for restaurants. And it turned into that, but as well as there's a lot of uh, messenger. Like I looked the other day, there's a thousand plus copies sold overseas. Uh, I talked to people, you know, I never envisioned talking to people outside of my area three years ago. A year ago, I talked to people occasionally in Canada and Australia. Now it's, you know, this weekend I had conversations with people in New Zealand. I had a call with a guy in Aruba today, uh, Australia, uh, an island, I actually put a map on my wall, you know, see it, because I was trying to figure out where everybody's at. I put a map on my wall so I can <laughs> visualize where people are at that I'm talking to. Uh, and that's what the book has done. It's, it's been pretty, really neat to have conversations like, you know, like where you're at, where are you at? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like for, for me, it's like uh, I'm in Barcelona now, right? And uh, I just like know the time zones like i have people from new zealand as well like that's the earliest and australia like some of asia <laughs> and then comes to europe and then uh the east coast the west coast <laughs> so 
So uh, yeah, I, I love this big uh, connection and, and you can reach everyone. And um, that's what uh, also like uh, Messenger about, like connecting not just people, but with the technology to to improve our lives. Um, just one quick question uh, from Bart at the end. Uh, so you already talked about uh, like what you have to communicate to the clients, basically just uh, the upside, the higher open rates, the more revenue. But Bart asks uh, how to pitch uh, your work for a new uh, client for a restaurant. How to pitch it? Well, I typically only structure this this way. I don't pitch somebody that hasn't asked to be pitched. Number one, you know, I don't walk up to a restaurant owner and, and tell them I've got the greatest thing since sliced bread. I, I know I've got an amazing tool, but it's only an amazing tool if they appreciate it. You know, for example, a, a business I've got that I'm going to go to after this call is I, a gym and I'm going to go work out. I, I can't tell my friends how great CrossFit, they have to experience CrossFit. Otherwise they won't appreciate it. Well, with pitching a restaurant, Number one, don't pitch. Listen, find a way to have a valid conversation. Have a conversation with them and find out who they are, what they do, why they do it. Because the one thing you don't want to do is assume that you know what they need. It's like I've I've had conversations with with companies over the past five or six years. About six years ago, I instituted what I call the Matt Plap rule. Uh, I was not allowed to look at anybody's stuff before I met with them one time meaning I would not research that if your company called me and you said, Hey, Matt, we want to come. We want you to come meet with us at three o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to talk about this, this, and this. I put in place a rule for myself that I was not allowed to look at anything. And the reason was when I did, I thought I knew it all. I looked at their website, their social media. I signed up for their email list. I drove by their store. I went in with all these preconceived notions. Well, there's a lot of reasons businesses do stuff that you might not realize. I actually had a company recently that was pitching one of my clients on why they needed to use this a, a marketing program they had for their lunch business. You know the problem with that sales pitch? They weren't open on lunch. <laughs> so, I mean, it was kind of the opposite. So this guy was pitching something he hadn't researched on. And so I always encourage people, sit down. Business owners all want help. There's not a single business owner in this country that does not want to grow their business with good customers. The problem is a lot of us marketing people suck at having that conversation. We, we suck at, I, a lot of us can't walk away and know that we're not the right fit. I mean, I, I remember having a conversation when I sold radio advertising. I remember sitting in the chair and I had a, a I saw I had the Bengals and Cincinnati Reds. So Cincinnati Bengals, an NFL team, this company I was working with had already committed to buy like a $40,000 a year package with the Bengals. I could tell from the conversation with that business owner, his cash flow was hurting, his sales weren't good. He was in a bad place, but he knew he had a contract. He'd agreed. He was living up to it. And he also loved the Bengals. And I looked at him and said, Joe, and I still know, I talked to him still to this day. I said, Joe, I can tell you're not in a good place right now. This isn't the package for you. Let me hook you up with a friend of mine. This is probably... I mean, this is a long time ago. Let me give up a friend of mine that sells cable advertising. You are sitting right in the middle of a cable zone. So instead of buying Bengals radio for the entire Cincinnati market and reaching people a 60 mile radius, buy cable ads from her and reach people five miles around your store and talk to a better audience. When we left there, my sales manager was going to kill me. What are you doing? You just basically canceled a deal. I said, because he didn't need us to. I could tell that guy is still a friend to this day. That's 15 15 to 20 years ago. And so when you pitch a client, before you pitch them, find out what they need. Could I walk in with this proposal every time? Yes, I could walk into any restaurant right now and say, hey, I'm Matt Plapp. I have the ROI engine. I'm an author. I speak nationally. This program does X, Y, Z. Let me show you the pricing. I mean, that. Why don't, that's terrible. Walk in and say, hey, I'm a local marketer. I work in the restaurant space. I know you're the owner. I love your establishment. I'd like to just ask you a couple questions and see if uh, maybe we can, you know, down the, biz, down the street work together at some point, or maybe just get your feedback on what you're doing that's working and what maybe I'm doing. You can give me some feedback on how you think it maybe applies to the business. Have that conversation. Then 
once there's a relationship, once you have an understanding of what they do, why they do it, and what they need, if you feel you can fit their needs, then you say, you know what, I've got a product called the ROI engine. You know, we specialize in, in getting great attention through digital marketing, growing a database and putting trackable sales in here. So, I mean, would you be open to working together and having me show you how we can put 200 people a month in this restaurant that probably weren't here before? Maybe some of them are. Maybe we get this go back more often. And then that's where I kind of show them some case studies. But that's where I start the conversation. And I think that's what you need to do as a marketer to separate yourself because that restaurant might not need you. And the minute you're in there puking on them, you're, you're now all of a sudden telling them how great you are, what, but you don't know what they want, what they need. You know, one of my best clients I have right now came from a third meeting introduced by referral. We sat down, we talked. He knew what I did. I didn't bring it up. The second meeting we talked, he actually wanted to see a demo. So we had a demo. The third meeting we talked, we're asking questions. And I said, what's your biggest struggle right now? He said, well, We've got this program that we do with offices where we deliver food this one day a week. And every time we show up, people forgot we were coming and didn't order. And so we could have had 40 orders. We only had 15. But because they didn't know, they kept forgetting. I would love a way to remind them. I said, he goes, would your program do that? I said, no, my program wouldn't work well for that. Why don't I build you something? I said, I said, full disclosure, never done this. I'm pretty confident I can get you a code that they can text in. And when they text in, they get a reminder every Wednesday morning that you're delivering food there. I said, I've never done it. I can probably figure it out. I'm smart enough to do that. You would do that? I'm like, yeah, how much? Is it nothing? What do you mean? I'm like, well, I mean, I think down the road we could possibly do business together. I might, might have a couple hard costs here. Let's just play with it. I don't know if it's going to work. Well, sure enough, the first week we did it, he had 45 orders instead of 15. They call me like, holy shit, Matt, this works. I'm like, good. They signed up. And now ever since, then, he's a client multiple ways. So I wouldn't have found that out had I been pitching instead of asking questions. Amazing answer. Thank you. And that's also what Messenger is about, about listening and not pitching. Like uh, if you see at your inbox in email, it's probably more like the pitching version versus uh, clever marketers on Messenger uh, ask question and personalize as, as we discussed uh, on this exact episode. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Um, how can people find you? Just a quick link. What's the best? Uh, I will put it also in the comments and in the show notes. Um, just I mean, if, you, if you're fine, I'll just put. Uh, I'll put a. Uh, if you're fine, I'll put a messenger scan code in there, and they, they can find me that way. I mean, I've got a Facebook page. It's a public figure page. It's called Matt Plap. It's got a. Uh, it's got my big uh, thumb on it or fist. It looks like a fist, but it's MP. Uh, <laughs> and they can reach out to me there. I'm pretty easy to reach. You know, one thing I'll end with is, even though what we're doing has a lot of automation you still have to add a personal touch to it. Here's a good one like from yesterday because I hop in personally. I get 50 to 75 on a slow day, upwards of 200 a day messages come into my business page. I count my personal email and text. And I try and communicate with a lot of them myself. Uh, and you know, even when bots are in between, because I mean, we spent, I guess I spent like eight, seven, eight grand last month on ads. And so that generates a lot of people my bot. Well, you know, this person you know, apparently came in my bot and there's a button to turn on the subscription. And I saw that I hopped in there. And I typed trying to turn me on. I see, you know, with some little heart, feel, you know, little humor. You know, so there's some things automation can't do. And there's some things that you got to kind of in, inject your personality into. Uh, and like we mentioned, like Facebook, like many chats conference was called conversations, which ironically, tell me if this isn't weird. This was the shirt that I was wearing around the house this morning. So I'm, <laughs> there you go, Mike. I got my mini chat conversation shirt. Uh, it was on my desk. I had it on earlier this morning before I got up and got moving and got a shower. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was a great uh, discussion and yeah, just uh, so much uh, value shared here. So uh, thank you for the audience who was here with us live and commenting and liking and asking questions. Um, or we'll end this live now and um, we will uh, catch up soon. You can uh, reach us later on, on Facebook, on, on, on the blog, 
or, or YouTube. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Wow, great tips by Matt. Hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did. And in case you were wondering regarding the messenger scan codes, I would just say that the QR codes can completely handle the same function with the additional advantage of less confusion. If you have any questions that you would like me or a guest of mine to answer, please just go to chatbottutorial.com forward slash ask and drop your questions there. Thanks for joining the Chatbot Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to rate us on iTunes and share it with others.